Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? I feel like a stand-up comedy, something like that. Can you see my position right now? This is so relaxed. But uh, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate that you can join uh, with me today to present this because I'm really happy. Uh, and I would like to share with you a couple of uh, things before to start. I'm from Costa Rica, so a really a small country that I couldn't find there when I needed to to like to, to, to use the sticker. So I needed like to move to the left because my country is not there. So definitely it's a pleasure for me to be here. So I'm representing Costa Rica, so it's a pleasure. So my name is Merari Alvarado. It's like a Ferrari, but with a name. So it's better to remember, you will never forget. So thank you so much for joining. So before to start, I would like to know, uh, what type of assistance we have? So developers, good. Managers, content creators, good. Testing area, design, good, good. I'm glad, thank you so much for joining. Okay, so one more thing. Have you worked with accessibility before or is this like the first time you are like trying to understand accessibility? Like, yeah, that's the, the, the most accurate answer, right? Like, I kind of know accessibility. Good, good. Okay, so in this case, I would like to share with you some important information about accessibility because accessibility is not a feature. It's a process. And sometimes we think that accessibility is just something that we can add at the end of almost, we are finishing everything, right? And we notice that it's difficult to go back to design or it's difficult to go back and programming everything again because we are contemplating accessibility as a feature, but it is a process and we will learn that today, okay? So I would like to start with this specific quote. It says, data visualization is not your creative outlet. Data visualization is making data understandable. Are you agree with that? <laughs> I want to see your hands. <laughs> Okay, so definitely, it's something that we need to be like <coughs> very, how can I say it? We need to be really clear with the type of information that we want to present. So in this case, it's also a thing. So even though the quote says that we need, we, we cannot be created, we have to be created in terms of accessibility. And we will see that in a minute because it could be kind of complicated sometimes, okay? So before to start, I prepare some material for you. This material is also accessible, so you can access the short link to the right, your left, and also the QR code. So you will have access to the presentation and you will have access to some of the exercises that we are going to try today, okay? Good, so I will give you one more minute. So do you have it already? <laughs> Good. Just in case, if you don't have access to that, I have some print materials for you, okay? So moving forward, what is accessibility? How many of you uh, had the opportunity to attend like the flash talk about accessibility and AI yesterday? Did you have the opportunity to take it? No? Okay. Oh, you have? Okay, good, good. So let's try to understand a little bit about accessibility. So we have two ways to understand accessibility. We have the first point, which is accessibility is a human right. It's not something that you think uh, that they needed to be integrated to the code and that's it. Accessibility is a real human right. So it's important for us to understand. The second point, now we are here trying to cover the second point. We are trying to create an opportunity for inclusion. So we are learning about how to create accessible products for people with disability and in general create accessible products. Then we have the other way to do it or to see accessibility, which is like now as part of um, many countries and also there are some policies, acts and everything that is uh, requiring mandatory accessibility. 
So how many of you are from Europe? Beautiful panel. Okay, so uh, from Europe, there is a new regulation that indicates that for, two, for 2025, every product needs to be accessible. It's mandatory. So now you know, just in case. <laughs> okay, everything needs to be ac accessible and it's mandatory. And this is important. Every content needs to be accessible. And now, regarding to the design part, every project needs to be usable but accessible at the same time. And sometimes it's quite difficult to create something that can be accessible and usable at the same time. Okay? So now, let's try to understand some types of contents that will be really important for us. And why is this important? Because we are designers, we are developers, we are content creators, we are not usually working with people with disabilities, right? This is not part of our job description, right? This is not common. But it's really important for us to understand that there are several types of disabilities that are around in internet, and sometimes our products will be interacted or they have a certain type of interaction with people with these types of disabilities. So right, I don't know where, is, where are the glasses. Okay, so in here, we are not emulating uh, people with disabilities because this, that is not our right thing to do, but in this case, we have some emulators of uh, visual disabilities, so you can take a look after the presentation if you want to know more about that because it's really important to understand that. We have the most common disabilities are visual disabilities, uh, mobility, so many people cannot use the mouse, and sometimes we are creating design that is only predictable with the mouse, not using the keyboard, and we are going to see that in a minute. So learning and cognitive disabilities, this is really common, and probably some additional situations like um, Cognitive load, probably after a full call morning, so maybe you have 12 calls, then you need to take a decision at the end of the afternoon and you cannot because you have like a lot of information in your mind. This is something important, so that's why some of the products needs to be accessible also for this view, okay? So why digital accessibility? Let's try to understand that. Usability is when we need to create a project to look beautiful, right? You can correct me if I'm wrong, right? Hello? <laughs> you are the designer. <laughs> so usually the, the design part, it has like a really great responsibility in to create usability or usable products, right? And then in terms of accessibility is how the user interacts the usable part with assistive technology like a screen reader, magnification tools, or using only the keyboard, for example, okay? So, what is usually the definition in terms of uh, usability testing? So, we think about learnability efficiency, the way that we can prove that the application is working or not uh, through errors, right? And usually, it's really necessary to use some type of heuristic evaluations, right? Because it's necessary to understand the way that we want to create the information. But in the case of accessibility, in the case of testing, or accessibility testing in general, it's trying to test the capacity of the system with assistive technology. So are you familiar with voiceover? Yeah. Yes? I can see that not so happy faces at the back. So yeah, I can, I can understand that. Uh, but yeah, definitely it's something that we need to think about, okay? Perfect. So there is another important concept that you need to know. For the developers, it's really important to understand that the way that you create the information in your screen or the, the, the layout, that will be the exact way that the assistive technology will read the information. So if your code is not like coded correctly, if I, if I may say it in that way. So the screen reader will not be able to understand the information. So it will be not possible to read the content in a hierarchical way, 
and also in a structured way, okay? Now, keyword interaction, what does that mean? So probably you said, obviously it's keyword, right? I need to use the tab, easy. But sometimes it's not that easy. So we have the keyword interaction usually for native components. That's usually the most common. And what are native components like drop downs, check boxes, radio buttons, right? Those are usually HTML native components. And in the case of assistive technology, they are usually familiar with that. So assistive technology can easily understand this type of navigation. But what is going on when we have complex components? When we have graphs, when we have uh, some uh, different types of visualizations, or now with the customized or the extremely customized sometimes permissions that we provide with our, uh, with our products, right? So what are the three things that we need to keep into consideration? You need to keep into consideration the structural navigation, the spatial navigation, and the targeted navigation. Probably it's the first time that you are listening to that, and I'm glad <laughs> because this is important. Because usually we think about, usually uh, uh, we are focusing only in the first one, a structural navigation. We think that everything needs to use tab like this, right, in a linear way. But sometimes with the, with the graphics, the complexity is different. The comprehension of the information is different. So at the beginning, we talk about the creative things, right? And with accessibility, sometimes we need to be really, really creative. Okay, so those concepts are really important. So when we are talking about accessibility supported, it's when the screen reader by default is recognizing like HTML native components. So usually the screen reader will always identify those, uh, those components. But in the case of programmatically determined, in this case is that you sometimes need to test with the voiceover, with NVDA, with JAWS, or in your devices to validate if the application of the, or these specific components, it's fully accessible. So it's important to take that into consideration. Now, what does data visualization mean to do? Usually, the common barriers for uh, visualizations are that Sometimes we are really happy like applying all the colors we want, all the palette colors, right? Because we want to have a beautiful graphic, but what is, what is happening when we have a colorblind user? Or when we like let the user to customize the graphic and we cannot provide an accessibility matrix that says, if you configure like a little bit extra of that, you will not have an accessible component or an accessible content. So that is important, okay? So now, what we need to understand is like, usually the user need to perceive the information in a proper way, and also the content needs to be intuitive, right? So this is important. There are two questions that I really would like to invite you to like, Take a screenshot, take a picture, because those are really important when you are designing, or when you are planning, or when you need to work with your colleagues in terms of development. What are our users going to do with this? That's usually the question that I ask all the time. What is the purpose of this graphic? What is the purpose of the information? So I'm working uh, for a company that is usually working with process management, so a lot of data going on. So usually the visualization parts, it's the most difficult thing. And so can you imagine my conversations with the developers, right? They are not always funny, and this is something that is important, right? Okay, the second question, how are we going to make this accessible? Even to start designing, or even starting to any type of planification in terms of developers, because in, ter in terms of development, okay? 
because it's important for us to plan in accordingly and also the developers need to have access to the different assistive technology as well. Okay, so some accessibility truths, <laughs> truths, my God, sorry, I'm, I'm from Costa Rica, Spanish language, native, you know, it's kind of a thing. And <laughs> for example, usually try to create an access, a graphic that will be accessible. Sometimes it's really complicated, so I can understand that. I will be not punish any developer about it. So we will have so many conversations, but that will be part of the process as well. When we're talking about accessibility, it doesn't mean it identical, it means equivalent. So that's why we have like spatial navigation, we have a structural navigation or targeted navigation because it depends on the graphic. And of course, the type of content that we're choosing, uh, the libraries, the code, the best practices that we are going to use, that is also important. Okay, so we are going to practice. So are you ready with the information, with the uh, QR code? So for the ones that I just joined, let me just go back to the, to the initial presentation. So you can download the information or access the information in here. Okay, so you will have different type of uh, documents. In case you want also the printed versions, I have the printed version here. What we are going to do? You will have a document that looks like this. Maybe you can see it or not. <laughs> this is a data visualization. So you will have a specific information. So in this case, this is a graphic that is not accessible, but below that graphic, you can see three types of solutions that can make this, uh, this graphic accessible. Then you will have other two documents you will have like a specific easy check or checklist where you can find multiple um, elements or consideration, considerations, questions that you can probably take into consideration, <laughs> again, uh, to review your graphics, okay? And of course, I create a specific documentation with some shortcuts, including for assistive technology, in this case, as screen readers for voiceover for Mac users, mostly most of you, as I can see, and also for NVDA, uh, uh, for Windows, sorry, using a tool that is called NVDA. Okay, so what we are going to do, so let me just put the mic a little bit for me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. So this is the document I already shared with you. So you have a bubble chart. So now what we are going to do is try to check the specific documentation that I share regarding this, right, the easy check. So I will give you two minutes. So please read this checklist and try to understand what, uh, what we need, okay? So, for example, um, so what we can see here, so we have multiple colors. What we don't have in here that you can maybe see that is not accessible? The legend. Exactly. What is that? The legend. The legend. I'm talking without microphone. Good. So you know that I'm super excited, right? <laughs> so yeah, we don't have the legend. the legend, right? What else we don't have? Color choices. Color choices, like we have a lot and we don't have the meaning, we don't have any description below the graphic. Uh, what else we don't have? What do you think we don't have? Labels. Sorry? Labels, yes, labels, legends, a lot of beautiful colors, but maybe not useful, right? And what else we don't have? The explanation of the graphic. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, yes, in this case, exactly. <coughs> so now, what is going on if we are accessing the information using a screen reader, when the screen reader is not able to access this information at all, visually? So it will be a complete challenge because we cannot access to basic um, structures or basic information from the graph, right? So, what we are going to do. So if you notice, we have one graphic here. So what do we have in this graphic? We have the legend. What else we have? Labels. Labels. What else? Title. Title. What else? Colors, maybe a little bit more structure. Yeah, right? So, when we talk about the solutions, the solutions, <laughs> so we have multiple ways to create a solution that can be accessible. So we can use title description, color choices, right, legends, that can help us to create an accessible um, um, graph. Also, when we can provide alternative HTML ways, because sometimes I can find like a multiple websites, including a screenshots of graphics without any alternative text. So, and a screen reader with just read blank. No explanation at all. And we have like a multiple information here. So for example, it's really common that when we have complex visualizations, we can create like a, like, like a version of a table. So we can create a table that can be exported so the user can also take the graphic, uh, the information of the graphic as a table. So it will be really easy for them to download the information and read it with the screen reader. Make sense? Okay, good. So now I want to show you an, ex an example right now of an uh, inaccessible uh, sharp. So. so in this case, this is a real graphic from Jira. So I will try to uh, navigate this graphic using only the keyboard. I will not use my mouse and I will just enable the screen reader. But um, just like this a speech viewer for NVDA, which is from Windows, so you can take a look what is the screen reader reading about this, and what we can do and what we can't do, okay? Okay, as you can see, this small window can show us uh, the way that the screen reader is recognizing the information. So I will start my navigation with tab key so you can just read what is going on, okay? And also, if it makes sense to you, okay? Okay. So please take a look. No descriptions, like or, descriptions but not clear, like super ambiguous, okay? I guess I'm so fast with this, okay? So we have some not marks. It's really great, well, it's a really good idea if you can structure your code using landmarks because it's one of the best ways for the screen reader, the screen reader users to access the content, okay? Now, just move here. So as you can see, I'm not using my mouse, so that's why it's quite complicated. Okay, perfect. So now uh, it's time to access the graphic. So what is going on? I don't have access. I cannot access the graphic at all. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. So I cannot access the graphic. I immediately jump from the three dots at the right side, go directly to the edit button. So the user was not able to access the content, so I'm not able to read. So what other uh, thing it's important to take into consideration? 
the interactions with the graphic are only available with mouse. This is a blocker. This is something that will be considered a violation and you can receive a lawsuit just for that. And this is important, okay? Is that every bad issue? I'm sorry? Is that every bad issue? Or? Yes, it is. So it just, uh, yeah, so Jira has some problems right now. <laughs> so you can, you can send some comments to that. Okay, yeah, but this is a Jira issue right now. So in this case, sometimes it's necessary for us to always validate what type of information we have. If you notice, it looks beautiful. Probably you are familiar with Jira, but you don't, like, maybe you didn't, you didn't think, you didn't. You, the Oka one. <laughs> <laughs> so probably you have not uh, the opportunity to test Jira itself because you're using it for job or for your work, right? But in this case, I am testing that, thinking about a developer with disabilities or with cognitive with disabilities. So it is important that also our, the tools that we are using to create content must be accessible as well. So this is important. Okay, so let's think about other scenarios. Just a minute. Okay, so now the colors. What is happening if I need to test color blindness? Some of the change, some of the colors changes that probably make uh, doesn't make any sense, right? Or what is going on if oh, if I test using like for example, some of the glasses that I share with you are emulating certain types of disabilities that can also Think something like that. Uh, usually people with uh, some type of sight, they are using this or they are using something like this. So no, thank you. <laughs> not, not now. <laughs> okay, so if you notice, definitely this is something that we need to take into consideration. From the design perspective, usually it's necessary to validate how the users can access our content, keeping into consideration inverted colors or using just like the dark mode all the time, because sometimes that's, that is really important. And you will have a really, a really good um, process. Okay, perfect. So is there any question? Yes. Yeah, when, yes, so when, you, when we are using colors alone, that will be a problem. But for example, in this case, if you mouse over the, uh, the bars, you will have like visual indications that there is something like linked to that color, right? But usually it's better to link values with visual indicators or with some screen reader only categories in your code. So the screen reader user will be able to read the values that you have visually uh, displayed on your screen or in your layout. And also the screen reader will be able to uh, understand the information. So many pictures, I feel so <laughs> important. <laughs> so, okay, perfect. So is there a, Yes, yes. to each other. Uh, so I, I wanted to ask uh, what about the differences between uh, hues and uh, saturation uh, when you are uh, using those inverted grayscale or yellow and black? Well, now when, when some users need to invert the color because they need, uh, they have like a special like um, reading needs or accessing the information in different ways, 
one of the most important top, the, the most important things are the visual uh, elements because we have multiple disabilities. We have uh, we can have people with um, visual disabilities, low vision, but also they cannot hear correctly. So they cannot use a screen reader to read the information as well. So everything needs to be on the screen. So even though we cannot perceive the color, if we have a really good heading, uh, title of the, uh, of the, um, on the graphic, the labels, those can be helpful additional elements that can, um, can help the user to understand the content. Also, elements like, uh, like annotations or tooltips are really great because some of the users can access to those elements and they will be able to understand the context in general. So one of the most important things when we are creating complex data is the context. If we are providing good context, the users will be able to understand what we want to say, right? Okay, so I will move to the presentation again and then we will have another time for questions, okay? Okay, perfect. So I guess one of the most difficult things when we are creating uh, complex data or complex visualization is the way that we present the information. How clear is this information? So we need to think, what is the purpose of the information? What, if, if the specific selection of the graphic or the presentation is the correct one, to just transmit what we want to, okay? So it's really, really important. Okay, so always ask, let me use the other mic because I really would like to do this, it's like, I like it. <laughs> so I think one of the most important uh, considerations is like always ask the purpose of the visualization. What we want to achieve. So also it's like, is this intuitive enough to properly have my mind focus on the information? So I'm just relying on the colors or I'm just relying on, on the way that, of the data that I want to present instead of the construction of the information. This is really, really important. So I know this is like a super flash crash course, right, in terms of visualizations. Uh, but for me, it uh, was a pleasure to present this. And so I would like to move to some of questions because I guess we have a couple of more minutes. So any question? Yes. I have one. Um, actually, uh, about the start, about the color of the start. I'm thinking of the colors as an extra dimension in the start. So should we always uh, replace uh, that, that dimension uh, with text? Uh, because I, I was thinking uh, the possibility of replacing the colors with a pattern, like a visual pattern. Mm -hmm. Is that possible or should we always add some text uh, related to that color or pattern, for example, that dimension of the chart? <laughs> well, yes, I know. <laughs> I know, sorry, the answer is like weird. But yeah. for example, um, you can use texture to create some content that will be accessible, uh, easily to recognize. That would be really, re really good to have this. Uh, sometimes you will have the patterns, so you will require the patterns together with the visual indicators. But sometimes for assistive technology, you can use only the patterns and maybe the indicators for the screen reader can be only in the code. They shouldn't be visual. Will the assistive technology recognize the patterns? Yes. Oh. No, they are, sorry, the oh. patterns will be <laughs> not recognized, but the, co but the code that you can add uh, or the screen reader category in your code will be able to say, okay, even though we have a pattern there, mm -hmm. in the code, if you have the attribute for the screen reader, they will be able to recognize that in the code or using the code yeah. as reference, not the visual presentation. Would there be any difference if the pattern, for example, uh, instead of being an image, uh, it would be an SVG? Huh. I don't know how else uh, I would describe that. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if I understood the question. But uh. for example, if we are using images mm -hmm. to create that graphic, we need to have, uh, we need to create two ways, okay? Mm -hmm. We need to include an alternative text to that image 
but this alternative text shouldn't, shouldn't say like, this is a graphic including X, Y, Z. No, you need, to, uh, you need to be as descriptive as possible. So in this case, you need to think about a tweet. So 140 characters. Do you notice that I don't use Twitter, right? So usually one f uh, 140 characters will be usually the recommendation when we have like complex data and we are using just images as that. But sometimes you can also use like some accordions below the graphic with a bigger explanation. So some of the users can just directly access to the description below your graphic instead of like having like any, uh, any type of attribute in code so they can just refer to the description. So there are some ways. As, as I can say, you need to be creative with the solutions sometimes. I, I was thinking the, about the difference between uh, raster images and uh, vector images. Does uh, the assistive technology recognize that difference? Um, because as we see, are vector images and you can actually go through the, the structure and the tree of the, the pattern. Uh, yes. I haven't uh, well, looked into that. <laughs> well, actually, there are so many images that you can use in your, in your, in your code, but I guess the most important thing is that if the image is not including the all attribute, we have multiple scenarios. The screen reader user will read the source of the image completely, so it will for them will it doesn't make any sense, right? And also we'll skip the image completely, but we don't want that. We want that the user will be able to read the information. So that's why we need the, alterna the alternative text. So it depends, again, the, uh, the, the purpose of that visualization. It will be decorative. It will be not necessary to have the alternative text. You can have a null alternative text. And also it will be like partially descriptive with a, sm with a short alt description will be enough. But you need to just check the case that will be applicable to you. All right, thank you very much. Okay, any other question? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, could you recommend to us uh, some easy sources of information about, about this topic? Absolutely. So I will share right now with you, so take notes. <coughs> so one of the first sources that you can use is APG. This is like a specific web accessibility initiative um, page that you can use for uh, native components. So in this case, you will have like a full gallery of the most common HTML components, and you can see in here multiple options. For example, with the checkbox, you can notice specifically the accessibility expectation, some examples of uh, components that are accessible, and also some keyword interactions that will be really useful for the design perspective, and also the code that will be required to implement this component in, a, in an accessible way for assistive technology. So this resource is really, really great. Another tool or another reference is DQ Web Accessibility Checklist. So, how many time? Okay, I have 10 minutes. Okay, so you will have this resource. In this case, you can use the Web Accessibility Checklist and you will have per type of section, for example, all the best practices for accessibility approved by the WCIG or the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. For example, if you, ask to the, uh, if you access to the page title, you can see what are the problems that can be considered a violation that could be affect your company, and also what are the most important topics in terms of best practices. So you can use this as reference, and it will be really helpful. Uh, another important thing is that in here, you will have this page. That will be the W3org, and in this case, you will have multiple resources. So you will have a design and develop section where you can find multiple uh, tutorials where uh, how you can create an accessible content. And you will have also 
uh, tools for designing, uh, for designing, yes. So you will have multiple references in terms of content creation. As well, this is really important for writing. So for content creators, it's important for you also to create accessible content, okay? Perfect. Then we have DQX. It's a plugin. Okay, this is a really, really great plugin uh, that you can use to test your pages. Um, you can use the, um, the free uh, option and it's really, it's really nice. Uh, you can like create, that, uh, like create the code or create the page and run this uh, specific plugin and that will be really, really helpful because you can obtain so, uh, some type of a reference or, uh, from your code <laughs> and also improve the code as needed in terms of accessibility. Okay, so those are the most common and um, most important uh, resources. Oh, of course, I have more. So just in case you want like the entire list I have in terms of plugin, in terms of information, uh, you can contact me or we can chat around. I will be here the entire day so I can share with you all the information that I have. And also, I guess one of the most important things here um, is like, always try to contact people with disabilities as much as possible. I know that sometimes we want to do it all, right? And probably we have the, the experience and, and also the capacity to do it. I've been working in accessibility for more than 12 years, so I cannot say that I have enough experience to create multiple sites, but definitely the support from people with disabilities will be the best. Okay, so always try to talk with uh, people uh, from, um, from the deaf community, for example, from the blind community. So those will be really great resources for you to understand what will be the real challenges for people with disabilities to access the web so you can have some type of uh, perceptions. Okay, so yes, another question, good. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. Now that you told us everything about preparing your website to make it more accessible, is there also new developments in terms of the reader using AI for the for the uh, disabled person to basically preview the website better for that person? Because from my point of view, it's much easier if we have a smart reader for disabled persons than everyone optimizing their website for it. Well, I have news for you. <laughs> there is. Um, no tools. Well, I if you had the opportunity to uh, to attend the training, just well, this, the f uh, the flash talk uh, about accessibility and AI, there is a tool there that was showing like the accessibility. To be honest, don't use that. <laughs> so sorry, <laughs> but uh, it looks that it's a good tool, but it's a tool that is like overlapping the real experience of the web. So if you don't have a good code best practices, you will get a lawsuit because of that. So these tools, so I don't, I don't say in <laughs> that accessibility is bad. I'm saying that accessibility is it's like an overlapping tool. So you need to definitely create a, um, a content that will be accessible and usually take time. We don't have so we don't have a specific set of uh, tools that can help us uh, with that like right now. Uh, but uh, the plugins that I share with you and also uh, some of them uh, that I have can help you. But it required, uh, well, it'll, it'll, it'll require time so, and practice. So that's the only thing that I can say. Sorry, I don't have like, like a magical pill to share with you, but at least a couple of resources. Okay, another question because apparently I have time. <laughs> run, Lorna, run. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Is there a, um, so let's say a worst case scenario, the graph, uh, for example, uh, you, could not, you could not create the accessible elements for a user to use. Is there a, is there a way of 
bypassing that element completely. Obviously, like you couldn't use ARIA hidden if you had anchors in it because they're focusable items, etc. Is there a way to make it easier for people to skip the crap and get to the content they want? It is, but it depends of the, of the context as well, right? Uh, for example, one of the tips that I can give you is know your audience. Right, because uh, if we understand that audience, that our audience, we uh, usually has like a um, high technical skills. Sometimes uh, prepare um, graphics in a way that will be extremely accessible, or not extremely accessible, accessible, and it will be like super complicated. Probably will be not the best idea, right? So know your audience. That will be the first, uh, the first thing. Also try to understand the context. What would you like to share with your graphic? It's just like, a, like as I said before, it's just like a decorative thing. So we can just create like an element or attribute in the code so the screen reader just skip uh, the visualization. But if that is not the case, we need to add a little bit more context, right? And the other thing is that we have something and you need to know that because it's really important. There is a document that is called VPET. Are you familiar with that? No? Okay. VPAT is a specific accessibility report or compliance report. So if you want to uh, share your awesome services to uh, public, uh, public um, institutions, you need to present something like that. So this report will include the real information in terms of accessibility of your data. So, in this case, you will, uh, you will indicate that you are supporting or not certain type of accessibility best practices in your site. For example, you can have a list of exceptions because, uh, for example, there are some graphics that are third party and you, can, you don't have any control on that graphic. So you can create an accessibility exceptions document or plan and you can include that specific graphic there because it will be not accessible. It will be not possible for you to create this graphic accessible. This is something that you can have and if someone like tries to say that graphic, that graphic is not accessible, you, you can say we have an exception here. But if you need an alternative way, we can create something for you. But it will be upon request. Good? Okay, perfect. Thank you for all the questions. Please continue to keep the conversation going uh, by reaching out to Merari after this for all your questions. So this is the end. Do you have anything to no. close? You sure? Okay. No, I'm happy. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Merari. Before you leave, here's a token of appreciation from thank us. You thank so you so much. much.